Welcome to the Register's Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County. This show is about Plymouth County real estate. Our headline for the month was, Real Estate Recordings Are Slowing But Remain Healthy. This is a December show. My last show of the year, as you can tell by the holiday hat, the Santa hat that I have here. Um, we'll be talking about, again, the November recordings and then we'll be talking about uh, some of our notable records relating to the holidays. And I have a great guest in the second segment coming in, Tim White, talking about some of our accomplishments for the year at the Registry of Deeds. So let's go first to sales of property. There were 912 deeds recorded in November, more than the 893 in October, 5% less than last year, um, year to date, we're still up 3%. Now we're going to go to an image of the sales for all the months so far this year. Um, there are 27 communities in Plymouth County. Uh, the largest two for sales have always been Plymouth and Brockton. But as you can see, all communities have had a lot of sales this year. The number of sales in overall documents for 2021 will be higher than 2020. And 2020 was the highest number of documents recorded since 2006. Next image you're going to see is a foreclosure deeds. I'm sorry, mortgages. Uh, we've had a great run with mortgages because of the low interest rates. A lot of people have used mortgages to finance properties, but also to refinance, get lower rates, or shorten the term of the mortgage. There were 2,653 mortgages recorded in November, less than the 29-28 in October, 16% down compared to last November. However, year to date, up 13%. Again, the rates keep jumping around, if you haven't refinanced, take a look at them because, again, you can save yourself money in your payment or cut the time of your loan, which makes you the owner without a mortgage faster. Um, again, we've always had conversations about foreclosure deeds, particularly since the meltdown in 2008. Uh, foreclosure deeds have been very low this year because there was a moratorium in place and they're still not catching up. There are only eight foreclosure deeds in November, slightly more than the five in October, but 60% less than last year. Um, and before that, uh, the number of foreclosure deeds were in the hundreds. So you can see what the foreclosure moratorium has done. And when you look at the chart for foreclosure notices, you'll notice a very much of an up creep in the numbers. There were 38 foreclosure notices recorded in November, more than the 32 in October, but over 500% more than last November. And you're also going to see an image of the foreclosure deeds and notices for each one of our 26 towns in one city. And again, Brockton and Plymouth have always had the highest number of foreclosure deeds and foreclosure notices. Um, so a couple quick things before we go to our guest is if you haven't signed up for our property alert, please do so. There are companies out there offering you the service for a certain amount of money per month. We have it for free. So if you go to our website and look up property alert, sign up and put in your email any recording against your property you'll get an email and you, can, you will know whether you intended something to happen on your property at that time and can take action right away. We're also really up in terms of recordings over the internet, 80% in recorded land, 50% in land court, the registered land, and another scam out there. And again, this is a scam season, the holiday season. There are companies that want to sell you a copy of your deed for $60, 70 up to $90. You can get a copy of your deed for a dollar a page 
at one of your offices. I have a great guest coming on in the next segment of the show, Tim White, who is the Assistant Registrar of Deeds, talking about the accomplishments at the Registry of Deeds over the past year. We'll see you next segment. Welcome back to the Registers Report. Again, my name is John Buckley, I'm the Registrar of Deeds of Plymouth County. In this segment of the show, we've always done something educational in nature. We've had surveyors, real estate attorneys, uh, surve uh, assessors, uh, people involved in the real estate community, many, many realtors. But I thought it was important at the last show of the year to have someone in from my office and talk about some of our accomplishments this year. I have Tim White, who's the Assistant Register of Deeds for Plymouth County, here with me. Welcome back, Tim. Thank you, John. It's great to be here. So I know uh, you've been on the show before, but why don't you give our viewers a little background again in how you came to be in this position. <laughs> sure. All your previous experience. Well, um, I've been a, a trial lawyer for over 30 years. Um, first having an office in Boston and then moving out to the South Shore uh, in the early to mid 90s. Um, and then um, a few years back, uh, you gave me a call to ask me whether I'd be interested in, in uh, taking on the role as the assistant register. And uh, it was at a stage where I was interested in, in, in making a change to see what it would be like. And um, I must say that uh, it's been a great opportunity to, to, to serve as the assistant register. It's been a, a lot of fun to, to do it. And perhaps the most fun, which was a little bit diffused by COVID, what wasn't, uh, was the uh, uh, opportunity to work with our Plymouth Colony records that we have at the Registry of Deeds, the records from the 1600s um, of the Pilgrims, um, and trying to work with Plymouth 400 and, and the celebration of the 400th landing of the, the Mayflower. Um, so that's sort of uh, where we are. Well, I know we all had a lot of fun, and you in particular had fun with what started as a poster project. And a poster project, um, I'll remind our viewers that we, uh, the site where the Plymouth Colony records are within our building on the second floor, it's a, it's a colony record reading and storage area, temperature, humidity controlled, and a, a, a very alarmed, protected space, but it is also a reading room with it that many people that are authors and historians have come in and viewed those. There's been a little bit of a hold up on it because of COVID and more restricted. But I mean, because of that, you came up with the idea to tell the story in a series of posters, and um, you picked about 27 or, may or more topics that a lot of people wouldn't really know about the pilgrims or the colonists, as we call them. Um, they all think of them as a host of the first Thanksgiving, but there's so much more to that. The right to trial by jury, first right to trial by jury in America, private property rights, the first ferry, all these different things that you put together in a postage project and because of COVID and the fact that we couldn't share them with people, we then moved in, in conjunction with Plymouth 400, for a virtual tour of the colony of records. We did. Um, the original plan was to utilize the posters and handouts that told the story of different aspects of the, the, the lives of the colonists. Um, and you mentioned a couple, uh, um, you know, so many firsts for America mm -hmm. happened here. And, and I know Jamestown was founded earlier, but the records in Jamestown are not nearly as, as comprehensive as what we have. They just weren't organized. They weren't organized at all. Uh, they have literally no real estate records. Right. So it's, it's just incredible the, the, the wealth of, of uh, information we get from these records. Uh, a credit to William Bradford, the uh, third, Third governor, right? Second governor. Second governor. Uh, well, the first one was on the boat, yeah. and then the, first, the, the second one was, was uh, Carver was the first, and he was the second. Yeah. Um, 
but it does tell this the story, and it, it, it allows you to almost to, to put yourself, you know, in Plymouth back in the 1600s, um, and and kind of eavesdrop on the conversations that they were having and the thinking that they had and, and how they approached life. Um, you know, something like uh, we did a one se segment on indentured servants, and yeah, we don't have indentured servants mm -hmm. today, but it was something that you might have remembered from your fifth grade or sixth grade or seventh grade history. Um, and this actually tells you how it worked. And, and uh, it just, it's a, it's a fa I mean, it's a fascinating uh, history of our country. So and, and we're that was very blessed to have it. Opportunity for people that had no money to come here and start a new life in America. Yep. They, and they worked for a number of years. Yep, and very typically seven, seven years. Yeah. Yep. yeah, very typically. Um, and I mean, the, the first the, uh, murder trial in, in, in our Always. country. Um, the, the fact that uh, 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 you have the, um, the, the first um, uh, ferry, right. um, public works project, right. the, the digging the Cut River, the Canal. Cut River yeah. Canal in Marshfield, all these firsts are just incredible in how they were able to, to govern and get folks to participate uh, in this uh, new uh, enterprise. It's just fascinating. And we had hoped initially to take those posters and the handouts mm -hmm. and present them at um, events that mm -hmm. we, there was going to be a bar association um, event a dinner and, and we would do a presentation together to inform folks and educate them on on the records um, we're going to do something with the realtors and other local organizations I mean fabulous opportunities for schools mm -hmm. um, and when COVID-19 hit that blew that up completely and we uh, kind of sat down and said, well, what can we do from here? And we came up with the idea of the virtual tour. And uh, it, it's just, it's a fabulous history of our country, just a fabulous history of our country. So if people would like to see that, it's on our website, connected through our website, PlymouthDeeds.org. It, it's a virtual tour with 27 different people talking about different stories. And there'll be stories in there you never would have thought yeah. would be connected with it. Honest. And names. I mean, you hear names like Roger Williams. I right. mean, a lot of us recognize right. Roger Williams as the founder of Rhode Island. Well, he was a witness in, right. in the second murder trial in our country. Right. Right. I mean, just fascinating, fascinating facts. So that was something that we were all proud of. I know the Plymouth 400 staff was proud of their role in it, too. And it's, it's a great thing going forward that will always be in place. There was never anything like that that will always be in place to tell the story. Yeah. So we also uh, made some great progress in our transcription project. Um, people don't realize that the earliest records are in a beautiful handwritten method, but as people are not even being taught how to read handwriting, um, they're never going to be able to read those records. So yeah. The day of the curse of writing right. is kind of going by the boards. and. And all of the original records, of course, were in right. handwriting. And, and right up until, oh, late 1800s, you would have handwriting. And then it started to mix in with forms and then finally got to the typewritten version. Um, so it, it, it is, um, even though their handwriting is a thousand times better than mine or yours, oh, yeah. Mr. Buckley. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, it still is, it's hard because the language is a little different. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's also, it's, it's hard to read it. And even the lettering they use were a little different than you'd yep. common yep. person would see. Yep. So we took on this project of getting those records transcribed into typewritten um, uh, version. And we started all the way back in the uh, 1685 with the beginning of the... the 16, no, 1685. Correct. Yeah, 1685, the, be the beginning of Plymouth County. Um, and we've come forward and we're now up to almost the Civil War. Right. Um, and so that uh, makes all those records so much easier to read. And we've, you, you can actually put them up on the, put up one on the screen and then click on a button and you look at the transcription right away. You go back to the original right. record. And it's great for researchers. Um, it's, a, it's great for genealogists. Right, because you can go back and forth and see both of them. Yep, yeah. Yeah, so, and we'll be, continuing that project in 2022 
as we transition into the new year. Yeah, try to keep coming forward and, and, and hopefully get all of our records transcribed at some point. So one of the interesting things during the COVID crisis was how many people signed up to do our electronic filings. Mm -hmm. We call it e-recording. Um, the, the ability to take a document, an ink document, scan it, and, and re send it to us over the internet. Our staff pulls it up, reviews it the same day, way they would a copy in front of them, a real copy in front of them, and can accept or reject it and put it on record. And, and uh, to Plymouth, County's uh, uh, credit, and your, yours, John, is that you had the recorded land electronic recording up and running for, since 2012? 2008. 2008. Um, and then um, the more complicated side of our registry is the land court, and you know, there was always some resistance to allowing uh, uh, land court properties to be, uh, registered land to be uh, electronically recorded, but we had a breakthrough just before COVID hit. Thankfully, yeah. Oh my gosh, such a blessing. Um, so that all of our records, whether you're in registered land side or the recorded land side could be electronically recorded. And when COVID hit, the number of submitters, the, the attorneys mm -hmm. that, um, uh, the banks, the credit unions that all wanted to record their documents um, obviously chose the, the, to, to join uh, the electronic recording system and put their applications in with us. And the numbers of our submitters just exploded. Right. Um, and, and I mean, every day, we still get a couple more in every day, but for a, a period of time in the beginning of, of COVID, we were getting just overwhelmed with the numbers of the folks that wanted to electronically record. Such that, I mean, I think prior to COVID, you know, we were electronically recording, uh, you know, you know, primarily recorded land, but maybe 40% of our mm -hmm. documents, we are now recording approximately, electronically recording approximately 80% of all our recordings are coming online for the recorded side and even 50% yeah. uh, of the registered land, which I never would have predicted. Thank, thank God we had that asset. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the other point I mentioned briefly in the early part of the show is our number of recordings have been really high. No one would have expected the real estate market prior to COVID to be um, so strong. And we, we recorded more documents in 2020 last year that we had in any year since 2006. And this year, we're coming up to the end of 2021, we'll have recorded more documents than even in 2020. It, 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 how do you explain it? Right. I mean, you know, you know, obviously you don't run into a pandemic every year, right. like every once every hundred years. So, you know, we really didn't know what to expect, I think, going into it, but we certainly anticipated a dramatic decrease in real estate activity. Mm -hmm. And it was exactly the opposite. I mean, of course, the rates were, have been excellent for a long time, but it's just incredible to me how many documents we've been recording in the last two years. And we also did a number of hardware updates, including our phones and desktops within administration and elsewhere. Um, something that has to happen. Thank God we have a technology fund that we collect, it goes to the state. We tell them what we need the money for, they approve it, and we can use that money and not really come from the county budget. Well, you just, you have to stay up with technology right. in, the, in this world and absolutely so much so in the real estate world when right. it comes to recording documents and for us to be able to be a customer friendly um, government agency uh, the better our technology is, the better our service is. And recently we had a uh, meeting with the assessors of Plymouth County at the annual meeting. We had a um, presentation on what we do and how we can make their roles a little more efficient. Uh, we have a great relationship with the assessors 
They use our sales and our records to set valuations within the communities. And it was a great meeting and a great continued partnership. Certainly a great way we assist the city of Brockton and the towns and will continue to do so. So I want to spend a little more time on this particular item. I mentioned it earlier, but we have a free fraud alert that people can sign up for. And if they sign up with their email, when something is recorded, they get email notification that something went on record. And there's a lot of potential for fraud, no matter how vigilant our staff is, if someone wants to create a false document, an illegal document with an illegal notarization, um, it could very well get past our counter. Right. I mean, you own a piece of property, and right. so you have a deed to your property. And right. if something goes on record uh, after you purchased the property and after you signed up for right. this fraud alert, you will get notice of it. So if there is anything that is not what it's supposed to be, you will get tipped off on it and you can, at that point, take action to, to correct it. It could be something unusual like the bank recording a discharge, but you still want to know. Sure. And yeah, and something normal, you mean like yeah, that. Yeah, right. yeah. But if, but if anything else comes up, the faster you get to it, the better you can fix so, the problem. Some, someone puts, tries to put a lien on your property um, or, or a, a deed out and they, they, they uh, 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 st write your signature down sure. as opposed to down. You try to move the property. Right, absolutely, case. yeah. So um, we have about 1,200 people that are signed up, which is a, a solid number more than we had, but there's so many households in Plymouth County that could take advantage of it. Sure. I just advise you, go to our website, Plymouth Deeds, Org, and go to our resources section, you'll see a fraud alert. Click on that button, follow the directions to sign up for it. And uh, last but not least... By the way, you would, might, might want to mention, John, that if you are getting solicitations from other companies yes. for, to, that they'll provide you this service right. at a fee, right. make sure you know that you can get that service for free I, through I, I, the I mentioned that County earlier, but it's good to highlight again. Yeah. Because a lot of people, whenever I get a request from a company, a sixty-dollar um, request for that you paid that you paid sixty dollars to get a dollar fee, and realizing the, the semi scam yeah. of that, I get very frustrated. Yeah. And last but not least, we're heading into in other um, period where a lot of positive COVID cases. So we dealt with COVID very well in the past. In, in, at earlier time, we had to do, we, we separated our staff. So if one staff got infected, the other could come to work. We had drop boxes at the three offices, Brockton, Plymouth, and Rockland. Uh, we've gone away from all that. You still have to wear a mask when you come in the building. But for the most part, we've gone back to normal operations. But in the event, that this comes around again, we will be, as you will be with vaccination, more prepared for it. Right. Yep. I mean, we, we purchased a number of laptops so that our staff can work remotely. Um, but having said that, we've always kept people in the building, right. um, which has been right. pretty extraordinary in these extraordinary times. Right. So um, again, I, I want to thank for coming. I want to thank the folks at PAC TV, Isaac Cabral's, Cabral's running this show. Um, we'll go into the next segment and talk about some of our holiday notables. But uh, again, I'm very happy with the work we've been doing together and with our staff, with the recordings, the upgrades and, and um, technology and the positive trends in all these different projects we've been working on. So thanks for coming. Glad to be here and a happy and a healthy new year to everybody. <laughs> right. Welcome back to the Registered Report. Again, my name is John Buckley. In this segment of the show, it's always something lighter in nature. Um, the holidays for the month, 
The last day of Hanukkah was the sixth. Pearl Harbor Day was the seventh. Sail on by day, which is the day celebrated on the Cape, that the shallop that were carrying the colonists on the Mayflower passed by Constable Harbor and settled in Plymouth, uh, was the eighth. National Cocoa Day, the 13th. Bill of Rights Day, the 15th. The Wright Brothers Day on the 17th. And today, the taping of the show is the Winter Solace. It's around 2 o'clock when the taping of this show is going on. About 11 o'clock, we transitioned into the winter. Uh, starting tomorrow, the days will get longer, only by seconds, but it's headed in the right direction. And then on the 25th is Christmas, the big celebration for most people. Uh, let me talk about a couple of our notable records for this month. They're related to the Christmas holiday. Um, Edgar Rose Snow was a well-known author and historian from Marshfield. He wrote 100 books, including stories of shipwrecks and pirates and buccaneers. But he was well-known for the tradition of the flying Santa. He would dress up as Santa Claus, climb into a plane that he piloted over the Boston Harbor Islands. And they were so inaccessible in that era, he would drop gifts to the island keeper's children and it was so well respected for doing that. And um, there's a plaque in his honor um, on uh, George's Island it is in Mr. Snow's honor. And he's well known as a preservationist of the Boston Harbor Islands. The next one is also a Plymouth County person uh, in Marshfield, the Brant Rock section of Marshfield. Um, a fellow by the name of Reginald Aubrey Fezzedin uh, invented a historic transatlantic two-way broadcast from a tower called Fezzedin Tower. He was a Canadian-born engineer, and he conducted the first two-way transatlantic radio broadcast between Brant Rock in Scotland. Later in that year, on Christmas Eve, he played the music Silent Night, which was heard on ships as far away as the Caribbean. Um, the base for the tower still stands there today with a plaque. The tower itself has been removed. He had previously worked for the National Weather Bureau and was chief chemist for Thomas Edison. And last but not least of our Christmas stories is a very proud tradition in the city of Brockton, uh, the first department store Santa Claus. James Edgar had a store on Main Street and the, the store Santa tradition began in his store. He was a Scottish immigrant from Edinburgh and he opened the department store on property owned by the Howard family. He had previously dressed up as a sea captain, a clown in George Washington but in 1890, he dressed up as Santa Claus based on a cartoon by the popular artist Thomas Nast. People came for miles around. Um, he, he didn't do it for the sales of the store. He did it for the children. Within days, trains and cars and people were coming from throughout the area to come and see the department store Santa Claus is a city park named after him, and he's very well known for his generosity. And last but not least, as far as our colony records are concerned, we had a lot of highlights of our colony records during the celebration of the 400th anniversary of the arrival of the Mayflower in 2020. Because of COVID, it carried over a little bit into 2021. But this particular document relates to the fines of the colonial court. Fines were assessed by the court for people that did various bad things. 
For example, according to their code, of course, Samuel Matthews was fined for sailing from Yarmouth to Boston on the Lord's Day. Nathaniel Soule was fined for being detected tell, telling several lies. Joseph Ramson was fined for being drunk the second time. Fines were assessed for failing to take an oath of fidelity to the colony and the church, for being at Quaker meetings, which the colonists really uh, had a distaste for, and for failing to attend public worship of God. As the COVID crisis diminishes, we hope that is soon, these colonial records will be more available to people in our colonial records vault in Plymouth on 50 Overy Street. So I want to thank Brockton Cable Access for doing this show with me. This is our 12th show of the year. I hope everyone has a great and Merry Christmas, Happy Holiday season, and a very healthy New Year. And we'll see you in the new year.